The doors are opening again on the House of Wellness. Today, a horror flu season's on the way. We'll show you how to survive it. Just knocked me out. I got hit with it pretty hard. Learning to love going to work. It's easier than you think. And if you think it's too late to grow your brain, we'll prove you wrong. We can really supercharge your memory. Mind, body and spirit. We've got you covered. Just makes you feel so damn good. So let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Hello, welcome to the House of Wellness and a very special welcome to my favourite super fish and super mum, Gian Rooney. Oh, thank you, Ed. Super mum, I think someone needs to tell my kids that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, and hello, everyone. And after being part of House of Wellness Radio and Magazine, it's really nice to be here at the desk. It's about time. It is, and a lot is getting my attention on the show today, including a subject which was important to me when I was training for the Olympics, but maybe more important now that I'm a mum. I'm talking about protein. Yeah, absolutely. Protein's one of those dietary buzzwords at the moment and we'll find out why later and of course it's a welcome to Gerald Quigley our expert pharmacist and herbalist GQ. Hello Ed, hello John. I often get uh, queries from people wanting to talk about joint pain so today we're going to be looking at that very closely and lots of information on the A to Z of vitamins. I'm looking forward to that Gerald but first up flu season is almost upon us and if last year is anything to go on the next six months are going to be tough. But it's not all bad news Lynette Bolton has been investigating and joins us now. Hi Lynette. Hello. I think we're all dreading those first coughs and sneezes of the season aren't we? It's true because when the flu hits it hits really hard but the good news is there are things we can do to soften the blow so I set off to find out how. Fever. Chills, headache, muscle aches, influenza or the flu sweeps through Australia's population every year so it can be easy to take for granted. It's actually a week, it just knocked me out, I got hit with it pretty hard. I have one lung so when I have a flu it's hard for me to breathe. But at its height, last year the 2017 flu season killed 371 people in Victoria, New South Wales, Tasmania and South Australia alone. Many of these lives were lost in aged care facilities. But a four-year-old Melbourne girl died only days after falling ill and fit young 19-year-old men in their prime also succumbed to influenza. And with flu season just around the corner, we thought it timely to have a look at this illness that can so easily wrap its potentially deadly arms around us. In the UK alone, health officials have reported the worst flu season in seven years. And apparently, it's headed this way. According to the World Health Organization, every year there are between three and five million cases of severe illness associated with influenza. So taking the flu for granted can be a dangerous business. We caught up with Professor Robert Boy, a leading expert in the field of influenza, to find out just what impact the flu can have on our body. So Robert, in really simple terms, what exactly is the flu? The flu is a viral infection that especially affects your lungs and your throat. It's a virus that gets transmitted from someone else close to us by coughing or kissing or other close contact. Every winter, somewhere between 10 and 25% of the population will catch the flu. Now, the complicated part is when you get severe flu. It can then go to your heart uh, or to your brain and either can be deadly. So who is more susceptible to the deadly aspects of this disease? Pregnant women are top of the list for the WHO to be vaccinated every pregnancy. In young children, they don't have an immunological memory. They haven't seen the germ before. They haven't seen the virus. In older people, they've got a memory, but it's beginning to wane and it's much less strong. And so when flu comes along, they just don't respond as well. And what can we do to prevent getting the flu? Your best shot is to get vaccinated. But you can also do good things like regularly washing your hands, coughing into a tissue. Another really good thing you can do is regular exercise and a good diet. Rest, take plenty of fluids, take time off work if you're symptomatic and you're likely to spread it. People who follow presenteeism and go to work with symptoms can spread the epidemic. Now, Robert brings up a very good point. 
With the average person feeling the symptoms for well over a week, it doesn't just affect us physically. It can also have a detrimental effect on business and our economy as well. It's believed each year the flu costs Australian business more than $2 billion, with an estimated 1.5 million workdays lost each year. So it really does impact so many different areas of our life. But what can we do about it? Well, there is the flu vaccine. In many cases, the flu vaccine will actually prevent you from developing the flu. It can also reduce the severity of the disease, as well as reduce further complications. So if there is the option of getting the flu vaccine or not, why wouldn't you? Do you get the flu shot? Yes, I've been getting it now for five years. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get the current one very shortly. Not only I do it, my family have the flu vaccination. Even my dog ever. <laughs> to find out a little more, I've come to Chemist Warehouse, where this year they're setting up 190 clinics in their stores nationally. What the flu vaccine does is it enables your body to identify the flu and mount an immune response faster than it would be able to do if it hadn't recognised it earlier. It means that if you do come into contact with the flu, you're far less likely to develop a full-blown influenza course of the disease and you'll have a much speedier recovery. We'd recommend that everyone over the age of 18 gets the vaccine. Well, with all that being said, there really is no better time for me to roll up my sleeve and put myself in the best position to keep this year's flu at bay. It wasn't too bad. Not at all. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. And well done, Lynette. Got the jab. I mean, it's hard to think that as many as 4 million Aussies might get the flu each year. Which is quite scary. We do tend to think that we're immune to these things, that we won't be the ones to get sick. But like you said, there's a fair chance we will get sick. So we do have to be very, take it very seriously. Everyone should be getting the flu jab because it's the best way to help look after yourself if you do end up getting the flu. OK, now we all love our kids, but they can be little germ factories. What can we do as families to protect ourselves? They're always bringing germs in, aren't they? So the flu is passed through touch and through inhalation. So there's some easy things we can do to keep our families safe. First of all, always wash your hands, especially before you're eating something. Try and keep your hands away from your mouth and from your nose. And you can also just do something simple like grab a saline solution. You can get them for the kids as well. If you use that morning and night, that's going to help clear out some of that, like, flu muckiness that we can get in our noses and all right. that all helps all right mm -hmm. get ready to roll up your sleeves for the coming flu season mm. wash your hands thanks for that lynette all right your hub for health is our website of course you can head there if you'd like more information you can catch up on our radio show ask gerald quigley any questions you'd like answered houseofwellness.com.au is the website to check out or you can even call us on 1800 469 788 and check us out on Facebook too. Lots of great stuff there. Be our friend. Stacks of healthy info is available every day. Coming up, now I've got a really inspiring story about one of our house heroes. A young woman whose fight with cancer could have meant she'd never walk again, but she's now determined to walk a half marathon to help beat the disease that almost crippled her. Next up, putting power into your day with protein. And later, star of our screens, Pia Miller is here. There she is now to share her beauty secrets. Stay with us on the House of Wellness. In my opinion, nothing is inherently good nor bad. But, uh, of course, cancer isn't the ideal way to change yourself as a person. you know getting their first boyfriend or going to parties or you know really figuring out who they were as a person I had to grow up so quickly a lot of it has to do with attitude and what you're putting out to the world and how you're feeling. Of course you're feeling sick and you're feeling down and bored and tired. But if you're saying, 
this is crap, I hate this, this, I'm never gonna get through it, then you're not going to. Cancer is so unbelievably painful in every sense of the word, but it, at the same time, it brought my family and I closer together and it gave me a new appreciation for, for life and how lucky I am. Um, so I'll be walking 10Ks for that and I'm very excited. That's what I'm all about, helping people any way I can, doing, doing something for the common good and not being selfish. Becoming a stronger, more refined woman uh, and headstrong and uh, powerful. That's what I want to be. There we go, another one of our great house heroes. By the way, Phoebe's recovery is going so well. Last year, despite her injured leg, she walked five kilometres to raise funds. This year, she's attempting to walk 10. Phoebe, what a star. Such a determined and intelligent young woman. Absolutely. Mm. That's really inspiring stuff. Now, there are lots of buzzwords in the world of health and wellness. In fact, some are just fads. Kale smoothies. No, thank you. Not nice. But others have been around forever and are increasingly being recognised for their importance to our well-being. One of those words is protein. Now, we know we need it, but what's crucial is understanding how much we need and when we need it. To explain more, we're joined by dietitian and nutritionist Susie Burrell. Hello, Suze. Hi, good to see you. I don't mind a little bit of a workout. It's an important part of my week. But protein has to be equally essential, doesn't it? Why is it so important in our nutrition? Well, protein is one of our key nutrients and it's vital for muscle growth and repair, to keep our skin and hair healthy. It's actually digested after carbohydrates, so it helps, helps to keep us full. Uh -huh. But new data shows in Australia, even though we might be having massive slabs of steak at night, we're not necessarily getting the overall amounts of protein we need and we're slightly below the recommended number of serves per day. Really? And six out of seven Australians aren't getting quite enough. So we need to do a little bit of work on our timing of our protein and the choices we're making through the day. Okay. Well, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but when I was training, I actually didn't watch what I ate. I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. When you're doing six or seven hours of exercise a day, it burns off pretty quickly. That's annoying. <laughs> so, like, you've won silver and gold medals and world records and you just eat what you want. I have to watch what I eat now, not okay, there good. now. <laughs> but so how much protein do we actually need, Susie? Well, it's always good to talk in food terms. So protein-rich foods are generally animal products. So yep. things like your eggs, your tuna, your meat, cheese, even some protein powders. Now we need about a gram per kilo per day but that's not so helpful either when you're trying to calculate. So roughly I tell my clients about 20 to 30 grams in a meal or 10 to 20 grams in a snack and if you always think about your palm size so a couple of eggs, about half a cup to a cup of yogurt depending on the meal, half that serve of meat in the front, a serve of protein powder which is concentrated milk protein and include those at each one of your meals and your snacks you'll be on the right track. So protein even with our snacks as well. That is one of the key areas we often don't do because we're okay. grabbing a muesli bar or a piece of fruit and they're nutritious choices but if you remember the mantra of always eat a carbohydrate and a protein rich food together mm -hmm. so for example having some cheese and crackers some tuna on crackers some greek yogurt and fruit you're going to tick the box for that protein and get that nutrient balance that we're looking for oh. and do most people would normally make the mistake of eating all their protein at night in australia absolutely because we have these <laughs> massive slabs of meat you know it's not uncommon for a man to have double that size and huge racks of ribs but I usually say for clients about a palm size maybe for the dinner meal slightly more if it's a piece of fish a small hand serve will keep you on the right track of that meal but it's about spreading it out through the day for nutrient absorption to repair the muscle and also to help keep us full. Yeah so it does that by making us feel like we're satisfied right it's, and it takes a bit more energy to break down protein is it that right? It does absolutely you burn more calories breaking down protein mm -hmm. but it slows down the, the actual processing of carbohydrates so it keeps us fuller for longer and regulates our blood glucose levels which is very important in Australia because we have a lot of people with issues with blood glucose control and often it's that they're not having the right amount of protein at the right time. Okay, so protein for breakfast, what's a good start to the day look like on a plate? Well, without a doubt, the number one choice is a couple of eggs, but other alternatives, some Greek yogurt with some milk and some fruit, or even a protein smoothie with a good quality protein powder blended with some milk, some ice and some fruit, giving you 20 grams of good quality protein to help keep you full through the morning. All right, protein-rich food at each meal, even your snacks. That's what I'm learning here. Check your hand for the portion sizes. Thank goodness for a larger palm size. And look for lean proteins and convenient ones when we're searching for Absolutely. That. You're wanting the lean meats, you're wanting the lean sources of dairy, handful of nuts, they're all great choices. Great info. Thanks, Susie. Thank you.
Coming up, Gerald Quigley will be back to answer your calls. And later, Ed attempts to use 110% of his mind. We can make sure that you can memorise much, much more and much, much faster. Brain, don't fail me now. Stay with us on the House of Wellness. Yum, there we go. Another nutritious to delicious fruit protein bomb recipe. That is a delicious one from our own Zoe Bingley Pullen. It certainly is. And those hemp seeds are a wonderful balance of omegas 3, 6 and 9. Good for your brain and good for your heart health. Yeah, double win. Time for your calls. Gerald Quigley is back with us. GQ, hello. We've grabbed dietitian Susie Burrell as well. And let's get this first one from Joanne, who's standing by in Surfers Paradise. How can we help you out, Joanne? My condition is sinusitis and how to cure it. And how common is sinusitis? Jim? Really common, Ed. And most people, I think, have low levels of sinusitis all the time. And when they get an infection or hay fever, then it flares up. As Lynn Bolton mentioned earlier, it's irrigation with saline. It's the simplest, easiest, uh, most natural way to do it. So it's isotonic, strictly isotonic, and preferably without a preservative, because many preservatives actually irritate and aggravate the problem. Yeah. Okay. Gerald, I actually suffer from sinusitis. I use a nasal rinse. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do that has an immediate effect once I've actually got it? Look, the best thing is to prevent. So use the irrigation regularly, every day, every night, just to wash away any of the allergenic material that you accumulate over the day. All right, next up, Susie, we've got a question from you. This is from Ron in Coogee. He writes, uh, after I eat, I feel bloated, regardless of how much I have. What would cause this and what, what might be best to take? It's a really interesting area of nutrition and we're seeing more and more people suffering from bloating. So as a dietitian, I'd really like to know what's causing the bloating. Is it the dairy specifically, the wheat, or is it gluten? And so I'd really encourage you to see a dietitian and have that properly identified. But in the short term, the best thing you can do is grab a probiotic. That's going to help to build the good bacteria in your gut. And if you think it might be dairy irritating you, look for a dairy-free variety which are available easily to get in pharmacy. Sure. Okay. And there are digestive enzymes which will help the process as well, Susie, isn't there? Fantastic, so. yes. All right. Now we have Natasha on the line from Crow's Nest, New South Wales. How can we help you? I get car sickness. Would magnesium help? Would it help? Oh, look, and there's nothing like being ill in a car, is yeah. there? That's a real uh, trip stopper. Yeah. Look, magnesium might calm you down before you start, Natasha, but there are a number of things. Ginger works well, but you've got to take ginger before you go and regularly because once you feel crook, ginger doesn't work all that well. And there are some medications from the pharmacist. They do make you drowsy, so if you're a driver, although if you're a driver, you don't usually get ill, if you're a passenger then perhaps if it's a real problem, speak to your pharmacist. There are a number of medications. All righty. A quick one. This is a, an email from Linda, concerned mother in uh, Mount Barker in South Australia. She's writing on behalf of her daughter who's suffering from stress-related psoriasis on her face. Is there something she can help with the redness, the flakiness? She's finding it difficult to sleep too. And it's stress, obviously, from yeah. her mum. It's a stress... Um, introduce things, so stress control, lots of omega-3, Susie, because they're anti-inflammatory. So many foods can flare up psoriasis and really it's proper skin treatment. There are a number of very soothing topical preparations that can be used and it's moisture, moisture, moisture. Mm -hmm. All right. Plus lots of water. And water. At least two yeah. to, two to three litres of water per day because yes. often they're not drinking very and much we when they're young. that so much, don't we? Yeah. Now, we're thinking about flu season. It's just about upon us, GQ. Lots of things, Ed. We're all about, on our programs, we're all about prevention. Yep. Staying as well as you can. So probiotics, thing, herbs like olive leaf, echinacea, garlic, the odour-free garlic, these things are out and about. They work. You've just got to get into the habit of taking them every day, particularly if someone around you is unwell. 
Mm. What about all that protein we've been just mm. discussing eating? Does that help? Protein, regular protein, absolutely important for immune system, but let's not forget our brightly coloured fresh fruit and vegetables. Course, Seven to ten serves per day. Massive natural antioxidant hits. They'll complement any supplement regime and needs to be the platform or baseline of our diet right Remember, through the winter months. For the, for the vegan, Susie, there, there is vegan. There is pea protein, isn't there, in the protein supplements? There so. is pea protein and you want a blend of protein, so a rice and a pea to get your full ratio of amino acids, sure. but you can get some great variety available for a good protein hit. Done deal. More calls coming up. Before we go, I want to make a quick shout out to Pucker Up. This is a cause started by former AFL star Wayne Schwoz. Swatter is on a gruelling fundraising bike ride from Sydney, zigzagging to Melbourne over 1,400 k's, and the Swans champ battled mental health issues throughout his playing career. He's now a tireless campaigner for men's mental health. And the aim to get us all talking about suicide prevention, a great cause. Now, joining Wayne on the challenging eight-day ride are AFL superstars Danny Frawley, Paul LeCuria, Scott Cummings and Justin Kaczynski. Good luck to all the guys there. To support them, you can head to their website. It's puckaup, P-U-K-A, up.com and pick up something from their online shop as well. And if you have a question for Gerald, head to houseofwellness.com.au or you can call us and speak directly on 1800 469 788. There's plenty of great info on our website, by the way. And don't forget, you can always like us on Facebook as well. After the break, boosting your brain, no matter what your aim. Anyone can learn to improve their memories. And later, if you spend most of your day at work, well, you may as well love it. Stay with us. We love it here for the record on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness, along with Gian Rooney. I want to show you something here. Take a look at this. This is Zashan Kokar. He's a 23-year-old student from Canberra. He's got this amazing ability, which comes from training his mind. Now, he sets a clock, as you can see. He studies eight Rubik's Cubes for six minutes. And what he's doing is memorising the patterns. But it's what he does now that is mind-blowing. He blindfolds himself, once he's got those patterns in his head, and starts solving all the cubes. And look at him go. I mean, he studied the Rubik's Cube for six years, practised this blindfold solving for the last couple of years, and he's using his memory techniques to the, remember the patterns. He's not looking at the colours or anything, just only the direction. He has to move the cube, and there we go. All eight solved. I mean, his aim is to get to 41. That's the world record, and he's done 40. So, Extraordinary. It's mind blowing. <laughs> what the brain can do and how you can train your good old brain. By the way, information travels around your brain at over 430 k's per hour. Wow. Well, that shows the old saying about humans only using 10% of their brains is just an urban yeah. myth. Yeah. It's actually just a matter of training and belief. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I was so inspired by Zishan, I set off to see what I could do to improve my own mind. <laughs> It's no big secret, when we age, our memories begin to fail us. You've just seen a movie but can't remember its title. You suddenly go blank on your own home address. But just as it is with muscle strength, the more you exercise your brain, the more agile it can become. And when you get older, an agile mind means quality of life. So when it comes to exercise plans for the mind, I've found the perfect personal trainer. I'm about to meet one of Australia's top memory athletes. Daniel Killoff is a Memory Olympics silver medalist. Yeah, it's a thing. And he also holds Australian records for memorising abstract images. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Daniel Killoff. And today, I'd like to share with you a secret that changed my life. This is Daniel Killoff, brain athlete and memory coach. After struggling at school with poor memory as a student, Daniel discovered a set of memory enhancing techniques that turned his entire life around. Graduating first at uni and coming second at the 2011 Australian Memory Championships. Your brain wasn't always this way, was it, as a kid? No, absolutely not. In fact, uh, I had a notoriously bad memory as a child. Um, I would walk into rooms, forget why I'd gotten there. Um, you know, my, my parents, my school were very, very worried about my poor memory. To demonstrate his abilities, Daniel's memorised this shuffled pack of 52 cards and rearranged a brand new deck to match. Let's see how he goes. Snap. Nines. Jacks. Fours. So far, so good. Yes. Last few. Come on, Daniel. And 
mate. It's unbelievable. Is there something equally difficult you could teach me we uh, get to work? Absolutely. So yeah. anyone can learn to improve their memories. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a test uh, set up inside just to kind of get your baseline first. OK. Today, Daniel has vowed to improve my memory with a single lesson. But before I can learn any of his techniques, he needs to get a feel for my recall abilities. So here goes. Right, here we go. Let's fill it up from the left. I have only a few seconds to memorise all 12 objects on this table. And why not test yourself while I do it? How many can you remember? Uh, Daniel, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah. How'd you go? Well, so I walked in, there was a red stereo. I was thinking about stamping on the red stereo, a Mercedes, some Sunnies, or there was a little pot that you put, like, sources in, a wellness magazine, Elise Taylor, nice cover. There was more memory-boosting stuff. There was a teddy bear and a witch's hat, and something red, but I, I can't recall it. So there you go. Uh, what did I miss? <laughs> uh, a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> But the good news is you're off to a really good start. And with a little bit of fine tuning, we can make sure that you can memorise much, much more and much, much faster. OK. We can really supercharge your memory. OK, I got 8 out of 12 in the first room. That's not too bad. But for my second test, I'm going in armed with a memory strategy Daniel calls monomics. It's a way to encode really hard to remember information, so it's much easier to recall. The trick, the kind of special source of the art of memory then, is to take the kinds of stuff that we struggle to remember and transform it into the kind of thing that we remember more or less effortlessly. So there are three things you've got to remember. These are mindfulness, visualisation yep. and organisation. According to Daniel, the key to improving your memory is to create a vivid mental image or story involving the information that's important to you. Association is the language of memory. To create a visual mental image, and then to create a story, to create associations between the things that we want to remember. So, let the games begin. But this time, I'm trying to visualise an entire story in my head, being mindful of how all the props on the table are organised within my mental picture. All right, how'd you go this time? Yeah, good, Dave. Daniel, Daniel, <laughs> I've made up a zany story for each room to link them all together like you taught me. I think I'm going to get them all. And there's a dirty old telephone there. We need to clean it with a cleaning spray. actually need more, so I grab an ice cream scoop to clean it all. And this is all about increasing my memory, so I've got some memory booster pills that I take, and it makes my memory so good. It's just enriching my life. So there's a wallet there. The wallet's just filling with all this memory, and it's spilling down to my shoe, which is a little ivory shoe that's really small. It's embarrassingly small. We go and grab a tape measure to see if it's actually a world record small shoe, and it is. So we take a photo with a little camera there. It's a dark room, so we use this umbrella that's there to make it the big photographer's flashy thing. And on a photo shoot, you always have nice candles going. There's an incense burning candle. We use that to fan away the smell of this incense burner. But I tell you what, I'm the iron man of memory. There's an iron and we're broadcasting it across Australia on the little sound system stereo that's there. That is it. Fantastic, 100%. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Oh, that is, that's exhilarating. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Uh, can you show me how to do this one? I can. <laughs> 12 out of 12. Oh, that was pretty impressive, Ed. Can I point out there was also two other rooms with 12 items. My boss couldn't bear the fact that I got them all right, <laughs> but it's such an empowering way to boost your brain in a quick time. OK, well, I've got a question for you. My four-year-old son, Xander, his yep. memory is incredible, but mine could use a little bit of work. So can you explain to me in layman's terms, location, association and visual visualisation? Yeah, it's all about not trying to remember a whole list of things, but just the relationship of one to the next and then that one to the next. So if you're really animated, you heard the story I was telling, it was just about, oh, that shoe's really small, let's measure it with this measuring tape. And look, let's take a photo of it because it was the smallest shoe ever. So you just link one thing to another, but make it really exuberant, crazy even, and that story kind of sticks in your head. 
Seems to work. And I really agree with Daniel because apparently doesn't he want this taught in schools? Well, wouldn't that be far more fun than just learning 3 pi 3 is mm. 9, 3 by 4 is 12? It's just visualising the 3 as a, as a pitchfork yeah. and then and just doing it a really fun, creative way mm. and it sticks in your head. And it's a life skill. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's a fun way to learn. And, and it just shows everyone here I'm really, really smart. Now... <laughs> Let's turn our attention to an unpopular subject, going to work. All up, we spend decades of our life at work and here's the world's worst kept secret. We don't like it. I think we heard that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the old saying goes, nobody ever lies on their deathbed wishing they'd spent more time at work. Mm. But maybe they should. To explain how we can love our work, we're joined by Sue Langley, an expert in workplace psychology. Hello there, Sue. Hi, nice to meet you. Just to reiterate, I love, I love my job. Uh, why wouldn't I? But for many, that's not the case, is it? It's not for everybody, I have to admit. I love my work too. But often when people are going to work, it's not necessarily something they are excited about every yep. morning. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. For me, I love my work, I love my job, but you can sometimes get caught up in office politics yeah. or negatives. What can we do to change that attitude? Yeah, so one of the things I think is quite interesting is that we often have quite a lot of negative language around work. Um, for instance, when I first moved to Australia, I learnt the term hump day. <laughs> I had no clue what it meant, but apparently I'd broken the back of the week and I was sliding into the weekend like the week Bet is you bad. were relieved once yeah. you went there too. <laughs> but we have this language, Monday-itis. We talk about negative things to do with work. And that doesn't always serve us because if that's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm wiring into my brain. Mm -hmm. And yet time and time again, when I've got a group of people in front of me and I ask who likes their job, majority will put their hand up. It's like, well, why do we complain about it all the time? All right, so let's not buy into the negatives is I guess what you're saying. How do we rewire our, our thinking around that? Well, we need to watch our language. Think about this, whether you um, go out to work or whether you work in the home, we often use language that is detrimental. I have to go and take my kids to, to swimming at the weekend. Oh, I've got to write that report. Oh, I have to go to that meeting. The language we use actually makes it worse for ourselves. We know that as soon as you tell someone they have to do something, the brain immediately goes, no, I don't. <laughs> if I tell you can't do something, you immediately want to do it. So sometimes if we can just watch our language, what are we saying at work? It's really easy to complain. And yet, do we really enjoy our work? And if we do, why not tell people now and again? Mm. And that positive attitude obviously can feed off into everyone that's at that workplace. Absolutely, and we often talk about, um, in the work that I do, positive or negative energizers. So I have a phrase that I stole from a colleague, <laughs> is um, do I positively energize a room more when I enter it or when I leave it? That's nice. <laughs> Yes. I think it's an important question we should be asking ourselves. How am I showing up? Whether I'm showing up with my kids when you're with your children, how are you showing up? Are you a positive energizer? Or are you someone who's kind of sucking the life out of things? Yeah, do many people feel that the negative is kind of the default setting for us all? It work? is. It's way easier to complain. Um, and I have to admit, some of the things I've even heard this morning was mainly complaints. <laughs> um, and I sometimes feel I'm the weird one because I'm saying, actually, I had a really good run here. It was great in the traffic. Mm. But often we find it easier to complain. And to be honest, if I complain and you agree with me, my brain then feels a sense of reward because you're empathising, you're connecting with me. Yeah, yeah. So it actually, in some ways, bonds us to have a nice whinge. Mm. And yet it's not ideal for us in the long term. And I also read that about the environment. Our actual environment can affect how we feel about our workplace. Yeah, absolutely. So hold on, I've got something I'd like to show you. Here we go. Oh, oh apple for the teacher. <laughs> Fantastic. Love an apple. So this is a useful analogy. Right. Sometimes when people at work have um, made a mistake or um, they're not enjoying it, we often talk about a bad apple. Yes. Somebody negative can easily spiral a team down pretty quickly. But we've also got to consider how is that apple impacting the others and the barrel that the apples sit in. So sometimes our workplace environment is actually not conducive to our well-being either. So a lot of organisations want to help the well-being of the individual but what about the barrel they've put them in? Mm. And equally, what about the bad barrel makers that have created a system that means people can't flourish? And we're seeing that a lot in different organisations with pressure, whether it's teachers or lawyers or whatever you, that the barrel that they're sitting in is not making it easy for me to increase my wellbeing. Good mm. points. All right, so some important tips for our viewers who might not be loving their work every day. Watch your language. That's really important. Be positive. Um, also, focus maybe more on your strengths. Yeah, work. so something we often talk to people about is what 
are your strengths? What do you love? And thinking about those rather than always what's wrong, how can I bring my greatest strengths? Mm. And again, if you're a mum, what makes you a great mum? What makes you a great dad? And I love your other one, be the energizer coming into the room. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, our thanks to Sue Langley there. Nice to see yeah. you today. Thank you. Now, don't forget, we are everywhere on Sunday mornings. You can catch me and the team, including Gerald Quigley, on the House of Wellness Radio Edition. 2GB in Sydney, 3AW in Melbourne, 4BC in Brisbane, 5AA in Adelaide and 6PR in Perth. Catch you on the radio and stay with us for more. There's still more to come here in the house. On the A to Z of vitamins, we'll find the key to keeping your joints healthy. But next, an old work friend of mine, former Home and Away star Pia Miller, joins us on the couch. So stay home, don't go away on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness. Our next guest is not only a stunning model and actress, but foremost, a mother to two rambunctious boys. And a regular on our TV screens. Would you please welcome former Home and Away beauty and an old friend of mine, Pia Miller. Hi, Pia. Hi. We want to find out about the recent dash to LA soon, but first of all, I guess the first question has to be, how do you fit everything in mm. such a busy <laughs> working mum? Yeah, um, look, it is crazy and it is busy, but, you know, I have incredible help from good friends and family. Um, my boys are a bit older as well, so that makes it easier. They can get themselves to and from places, or the older one anyway. Um, and yeah, it's. I guess we just sort of we rally troops in, we bring people in, and it takes a village. <laughs> that old saying, it takes a village. So it's literally true. Yeah. Now, yeah. we used to work together a long time ago. Yep. You have not aged a day since <gasps> then. Please tell me your beauty <laughs> secrets and what beauty means to you. Well, I, I suppose for me it's it's about feeling, you know, comfortable and confident in your own skin and I feel like that radiates um, from the inside out. But for me, as, as a busy mum, it's just about finding things that make getting out that door quick and easy. Um, so, which brings me to the, the Venus Comfort Glide. Um, you know, it's it's a razor. It's got it's it's beauty butter bars on the outside, so they they moisturise and shave at the same time. Oh. Talk about efficiency. Like I said, anything that gets you out of that door feeling good, confident, and you know, doing it nice and quick, I suppose that's, yeah, that's the key for me. I support so, that. I, yeah. I have a few cyclist friends that are quite interested mm. right about now. Mm. Guys, yeah. all yeah. guys. Yeah, not just a ladies. Hey, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. we don't discriminate. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, now, quick dash to LA involved what they call pilot season. What happens? It must be chaotic. It is absolutely chaotic but it's fun um it's auditioning all day every yeah. day for for different roles different pilots um projects that are all sort of being pitched and um yeah it was it was really interesting for me it was learning all of these different different lines different characters different stories and then just i suppose just going in and yeah doing your best but it was definitely talk about being on the go yeah, right. all the time well you are on the go all the time which means you can often get sick, which means it's often hard to find good food. What are your tips for staying healthy? Um, look, I, I have... I suppose I have a, a, a balanced diet, um, if you will. I don't, I don't hold back on, on eating things that I enjoy. I don't hold back on treats. Um, I, I suppose for me it's, you know, being health, healthy means moving a lot. And I suppose with two, two boys, um, yeah, I'm sort of chasing around after them all the time. So... <laughs> Yeah, just keeping active and, and eating. Eat just basic. Eating when you're hungry. Don't hold back. You know, obviously try and get your greens in. Try and keep your, yourself hydrated. Um, but, yeah, it's just pretty much simple. Now, we're challenging and channeling all that energy into another TV project or movie. What are we, what are we next to you in? Yes, you'll see me in a new show called Bite Club, um, and that is out later this year. Fantastic. We don't have a release date yet, <sighs> but yes. Let's end on that mystery. But yeah. great to see you here on the House of Wellness. Thank nice you. To see you. Thank Let's you. take a little break. There's still more to come right after this. Welcome back to the House of Wellness, A to Z of Vitamins. Time, I'm going to chat about joint pain and stiffness. You probably got it from thousands of kilometres of swimming up and down the pool, right? Well, it's not too bad in swimmers because we're not that impact injury, but I played a lot of netball. That did. Good point. Yes. And knee pain. Is there something we can take to aid joint stiffness, Joe? We're talking yet about a joint which relies on cushioning. Mm. 
and our body produces substances to help cartilage production, which is part of the cushioning. We can't really get it in our food, so as we age and all this knee impact is starting to mount up, the, the joint space gets less and less. Yeah, right. Inflammatory factors form, and that's a really good reason to look, look at glucosamine as a supplement, because it helps the cushioning space. Yeah. Um, if only we could have lots of food which contains glucosamine, it'd be good, but there's not. It's formed from glucose. There again, glucose again, it's the importance of it. And it's designed to really keep the joint mobile and functioning. Alrighty. By the way, how many years ago did you retire? I love this story. Over 12 years ago, and, and I haven't swum a lap in over 12 years. Not a single lap? Okay, so the shoulders are feeling pretty good yeah, right about Yeah, I feel about great, that. actually. <laughs> in any foods, can we find something to help reduce the inflammation, maybe from a herbal side as well? There's not a lot about it. So mm. oats, um, tripe, how good's that? No. Tripe. Tripe Ooh. is good. I'll um, take a supplement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably an easier option for most people. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then. Um, right. I'll, I'll pass on the tripe, though. Really? Thank yeah. you for that. Um, by the way, uh, the A to Z of vitamins is brought to us by Nature's Own. Did you know you only have about three millimetres of joint cartilage, as you mentioned, but a lifetime of use can take its toll? Nature's Own glucosamine sulphate 1500 with chondroitin contains components of cartilage that may help to improve joint pain and mobility. Get a move on with the Nature's Own joints range today. Now, we've got a couple of calls still standing by. Uh, Ursula has been very patient in Western Sydney. How can we help you out? I'd like to inquire how to treat thigh on my left eye. Yeah, any sort of eye complaints, really important to act on. And with. particularly with styes, Ed, because they can get infected and they're really painful. So, Ursula, we've talked about saline already today for noses. Really important to irrigate and keep that area clean. And the mineral of choice is silica, the same okay. stuff we use for our nails and our hair, because silica is an expelling mineral. So it keeps all that blocked duct where the sty is forming, keeps it open. All right, fantastic stuff. Guys, uh, we have a very big show coming our way next week. We look forward to uh, facing our fears. In fact, it's going to be me facing my fears. <laughs> See the size? Of that spider, they wanted to crawl up and attack my face. Oh, well, I'm glad it was you and not me. We also find out about age and exercise and why it's never too late to start. There we go. Swimming, see? She's still Ooh. swimming. Yeah, Long good. after retiring, yeah. <laughs> Gian. Sadly, that does bring us to the end of our show. Big thanks to you, Gian. Nice to have you with us yeah. on the show today. Lovely to be here. Thank you. And thanks to our friends at Chemist Warehouse as well. GQ, we'll see you next week. Thank also. you, Ed. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Have a healthy and very well week. See you soon.